Good morning. This is November the 9th, 2017. Wishing my younger brother, Paul, a happy 51st birthday. Reading from my utmost for his highest by Oswald and Biddy Chambers, Sacramental Service. Colossians 1.24 Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind the afflictions of Christ. In another translation, I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ. The Christian worker has to be a sacred go-between. He must be so closely identified with his Lord and the reality of his redemption that Christ can continually bring his creating life through him. I'm not referring to the strength of one individual's personality being superimposed on another, but the real presence of Christ coming through every aspect of the worker's life. When we preach the historical facts of the life and death of our Lord as they are conveyed in the New Testament, our words are made sacred. God uses these words on the basis of his redemption to create something in those who listen which otherwise could never have been created. If we simply preach the effects of redemption in the human life instead of the revealed divine truth regarding Jesus himself, the result is not new birth in those who listen. The result is a refined religious lifestyle and the Spirit of God cannot witness to it because such preaching is in a realm other than his. We must make sure that we are living in such harmony with God that as we proclaim his truth, he can create in others those things which he alone can do. When we say, what a wonderful personality, what a fascinating person, and what wonderful insight, then what opportunity does the gospel of God have through all of that? It cannot get through because the attraction is to the messenger and not the message. If a person attracts through his personality, that becomes his appeal. If, however, he is identified with the Lord himself, then the appeal becomes what Jesus Christ can do. The danger is to glory in men. Yet Jesus says we are to lift up only him, John twelve thirty two. This morning's devotion reminds me so much of what uh, Frankie Trimble, my nephew, posted on his Facebook page, and I reposted. How confused must so many be at the hearing of so many varied gospel presentations? How many of these presentations appeal only to emotion and reflect the opinion of the orator rather than the scripture? How many have been deceived into false assurance because of something they experienced in a worship gathering? How many teenagers will see belief, doctrine, theology, truth, and scripture as a buffet with which to choose from? How many have fallen into the deceptive pit that teaches something other than resting in Christ alone for justification. No wonder confusion is rampant, especially in the Bible Belt. My heart yearns for a return to the understanding that God's word is sufficient. My heart yearns for continued reformation. My heart yearns for pure doctrine and pure evangelism, my heart yearns for the truth of Christ and his word to spread like wildfire. That end is at the cross. Words by Isaac Watts. Music by Ralph E. Hudson. One of my most favorite hymn writers wrote this. In the autumn of 1850, revival meetings were being held in the 30th Street Methodist Church. Some of us went down every evening, and on two occasions I sought peace at the altar. But I did not find the joy I craved until one evening, November the 20th, 1850. 
It seemed to me that the light must indeed come then or never, and so I arose and went to the altar alone. After prayer was offered, they began to sing the grand old consecration hymn, Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die. And when they reached the third line of the fourth stanza, Here, Lord, I give myself away. My very soul was flooded with a celestial light. I sprang to my feet, shouting, Hallelujah! And then, for the first time, I realized that I had been trying to hold the world in one hand and the Lord in the other. And that author, Fanny J. Crosby. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for sinners such as I? At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away, it was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. Was it for crimes that I had done? He groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away, it was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Well might the sun in darkness hide and shut his glories in when Christ the mighty maker died for man the creature's sin. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Thus might I hide my blushing face while his dear cross appears. Dissolve my heart in thankfulness and melt my eyes to tears. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away, it was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. But drops of grief can ne'er repay The debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. With Fanny J. Crosby I say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah indeed. Now, the last phrase, I'm happy all the day, I think may be better translated or phrased, I am satisfied all the day. Father, when we are not satisfied, when we find ourselves in distress, worry, or anxiety, it is because we are not satisfied in you. Teach us to live the good news to teach the good news, to be the good news, 
not to add to, but to let the fullness of Christ come through us in all ways. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, amen.